Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, August 9th, 2020. And it seems our hair is growing pretty quickly. <laughs> Got a shiny forehead. Yeah. And my forehead and your cheeks would be like a, a sweaty doll. Yeah, I have a lot of sunscreen. I didn't have a time to wash it off. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it looks like you're in love. Someone just flushed the toilet at your house? Where? At your house? Sounds like someone's flushing the toilet there. No. All right. No let's, get, let's get right to it. We're both in San Diego. Yeah, let me share my screen. I'm downstairs. Max, Max is up watching a movie, so I'm downstairs. Yeah, you got kicked out. I'm always on the run, even in my own house. All right, bring it. So the indices continue to uh, trend higher. And uh, all of them, all the major indices are above their rising 20-day uh, moving averages. Uh, what we saw last week is just another sector rotation. Mm -hmm. So we definitely saw some a continuation in the sell-off in uh, a lot of the enterprise uh, software names. Uh, we saw the, the market reaction to earnings to uh, Alteryx, uh, uh, DDOG, like mo most of the companies in that, uh, in the enterprise huh. software are just, are not having a, a great earnings season. Huh. And um, last week, if you remember, we, we talked about uh, the short-term weakness in biotech, how biotech was down two weeks in a row. Now, basically, software is down two weeks in a row. Uh, and those were the two big leaders uh, of the rally. But in the meantime, uh, money hasn't really left the market. It has just rotated into uh, laggards. And last week, uh, we finally saw a breakout in the small cap. Russell 2000 broke out that consolidation. So now it's appro approaching that... Uh, we're supporting that level here near 160, which uh -huh. is potential uh, resistance. But definitely a, a rotation into small caps, rotation into laggards. Uh, we even saw financials, uh, REITs, kind of all the laggards kind of perked up on Friday when um, the NASDAQ 100 just, uh, just uh, pulled back a percent or so. Uh, mm -hmm. So rotations continue to. Uh, God, there's so much money. Yeah, I mean these these uh, so much money. If it comes out of the Nasdaq, out of these five companies and rolls, it can move. You know, a little money comes out of Apple. Look at Apple. But the stock yeah. the stock could drop twenty percent, be in an uptrend, and money could just rotate. Stock could drop to like three eighty still be in a massive uptrend. And what would that take? A 10, 15, 15, so it drops 10, 12%, so it drops almost 200 billion. Wow. It's like like the, the, the small caps could double, uh, you know? So, you know, I thought it was getting silly, but maybe it wasn't Apple, you know, it doesn't look extended there. I, I sold some Apple, uh, but I just can't take it. It's, it's going higher. It seems like the, the, the pullbacks in, in the big five, uh, in the mega cap uh, technology stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, uh, they just, the dips keep getting bought in those. Yep. And um, the, other, the other major thing I noticed last week is that we saw some major, major melt-ups in uh, very highly uh, shorted stocks. Uh, I mean, we mentioned some of them last week, uh, like Wayfarer, um, Carvana, um, Overstock. All of these just accelerated higher, and uh, those oh that acceleration typically happen towards the yeah. end of a hundred dollar stock supposed to lose twenty four cents a share next year. <laughs> Why not? I mean, listen the it's a i'm not it's crazy out there it's crazy you know you've got a combinative fed you're gonna have more 
nonsense, give away money, give away until the election. Uh, it's anybody's bet at this time. You know, the dollar probably is due for a rally. You know, I'm not trading this, but the dollar's due for a rally. Rates are due to rise a little bit. I'm not gonna go straight negative here. I mean, famous last words. You know, what would happen? I mean, people are giddy with these small caps and now this money may be rotating yeah. into small right. caps. Can't blame people for playing the game. But if you look at like, like you said, Overstock or Eastman Kodak, you know, it's traded up what, 20 times on fake. I mean, that stock's gonna be shut down this week. Um, yeah, and you know, it's, when, it's highly shorted, just mel melted up uh, last week. And this, this is fair. Yeah. You see that 300, that's a, 10, that's a 15 bagger for March. They yeah, sell outdoor right. furniture. 320, uh, it's a $30 billion market cap, which is insane. <laughs> But, Which is why, you know, I'm an idiot. Restoration hardware, I mean, this is the pick of the crash for me. I'm so bullish. Restoration hardware is only a $6 billion. Company. That's what I'm saying, $6 billion. And, like, look at the numbers for 2022. Like, we shut down 13 bucks a share. So it's trading, you know, 25 times next year's earnings in a COVID world. Ah, that chart looks like it's going much higher in a way fair world. But... Again, you can't. You're going to have opportunities like this. Um, it's not letting me back in as great stocks don't. And um, congrats to the people that got that one. I mean, Wayfair, forget about it. I, it's blowing my mind. Uh, Carvana, blowing my mind. Businesses I would just never have touched. I mean, the stocks. What Carvana's gone up. No, oh, congratulations, people. This is just turning. This is a humbling market. I think people are expecting us to come in here and gloat. Uh, I mean, money's been made. I've made some money here since March, but oh my God, we have, this thing will cause trauma. There's people walking around with like trauma that got out of the market in March. I'm yep. starting to get those calls. What should I do? I mean, what should I do? What were you doing in March when everybody was panicked? Now everybody's panic buying. That looks like panic buying in a lot of things, Ivan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, including it, Apple and Facebook. You know, late stage breakouts. We're coming up on an election for Christ's sake, where there's like a battle of like America, right? You've got high schools. I mean, again, I'm bullish. Don't get me wrong. Like the breath is good and the Fed is accommodating, but. High schools are going to be shutting down left and right in the next month. There's going to just be another, I wouldn't call it a panic, but the, the reality is like in, I saw in Georgia, the virus breaking out at high schools, you got Harvard shutting down. Um, this is going on and on and on. Uh, the summer's coming to an end. I think the instinct is it's an easy trade. Money's going to rotate, but I'm with you. Like the small caps look interesting. The financials, if I was really, really active, the financials look interesting too, like you said, Ivan, you, you know, a, yeah, a lot of this, might, you can move financials. What's the market cap of Goldman? Goldman's a hundred billion. Oh, so. yeah, the, the, they could play with this thing and, and, and double it. You know, you come up with a story where money coming out of Apple could double uh, Goldman, it would be like a fart. Uh, be like a little fart that uh, money comes out of the FANG stocks. And almost three trillion. So you take ten percent out of Fang and redistribute it. Uh, it's going to cause a lot of pain. So I think your our job, Ivan, is to find out where it would go. It looks like financials to me. People go oh, book value, blah blah blah. I mean, obviously, with the elections uh, approaching, it could be a lot of um, underwater rocks. And for example, next week uh, Biden is supposed to announce uh, his pick for a VP. And depending on that, I mean, if, if let's say he picks Elizabeth Warren, I don't think that's positive for financial. So it, it just depends on, ma on many factors. Uh, but the one big trend that has been ongoing uh -huh. this year, especially the past uh, couple months, is just solar. Uh, solar stocks continue to gap up. And so far, every single solar stock that uh, reported earnings this quarter has gapped up and just go. Uh, and and so far, I mean, the earnings are not even that spectacular, but the market is just forward looking and just kind of projecting a new clean uh, energy bill 
and the action in solar continues to be extremely positive. Yeah, I owned a stock a couple of years ago, got chased out and I think plummeted from 140 to 60. It's, it's a lesson, you know, in trend forward. Is there like 12 to 14 solar stocks and all of them are just looking super bullish, just breaking out and consolidating and then mm. breaking out again. Yeah. Even for solar, uh, big Oh my goodness, that's, that's a late comer. Okay, yeah, work, give me the weekly on that. God, I've traded that so many times and, and have my heart broken. And of course, this time I'll be real. 80 is kind oh of my goodness. level, but yeah, it, it's approaching it. And let's take a look on uh, monthly. So you can see it's, it, it has built a big base here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, no, no, no. But it is a laggard solar. So how, how are you trading? So they're on your swing list. Well, since the entire industry is moving, eventually all of them are going to catch up. I mean, obviously, it's not doing as well as the younger one, like Run or like uh, V-Solar or... Wow. Because these are the newer solar stock. The first yeah, solar I, I don't stock know. Playing the laggard is always a dangerous game. I was doing that in e-commerce with Stitch Fix. Yeah. Uh, and Yeah, I, I don't recommend playing the laggard unless you really know the companies. But yeah, there, there, there's some good charts. Strong, strong trend. Just not only solar, but clean, clean energy in general. Mm -hmm. Very strong trend. So I guess the market is kind of front running. Again, I don't think what people understand is how bifurcated this is, you know. Six stocks are making up, you know, most of the market. So a little bit of rotation can move these stocks as we're seeing massive amounts. There's so much money hitting, hiding in those Fang and Microsoft and Tesla, uh, Shopify. Uh, just a little bit of rotation without panic will lead to some massive moves. Um, so we'll see. I, 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 I really am confused. You know, you got the chunk. If we look at Tencent, that looked great. And then, you know, makes sense to me, a digital wall. I mean, that's always the overhang. And then boom. Yeah. You know, like, like, most what's Chinese, up? Most Chinese stocks uh, dived. Uh, he had a bad day on Friday. Uh, but, uh, and well, I mean, he's, he's, ban he, he, he's banning them uh, from, you know, and this, this was a headline risk for since he's been president, right? So uh, they were kind of living on borrowed time. Um, and, you know, with TikTok being forced to kind of do something and Tencent getting the threat as well. Um, my, the question is, those have been, every time he's talked down China, he's cut a deal. This time, it's just hard to predict. I wouldn't put my money, uh, one way or the other. I mean, Tencent, Tencent I'm bullish on because if we pull up Tencent, I mean, uh, it's just, they're so diversified and they're just such a great company. And, uh, you know, um, in the gaming space, that, you know, in the low 60s, I'd, I'd be touching. I think the interesting deal of the, of the year, if not the past few years, is Lavago, uh, Teladoc switching to medical. TDOC was, well, LB, LBJ, it's like a 60 billion. I mean, these companies were tiny a year ago relative to the market. Yeah. But both and of them, we give like a out. massive, I mean, this stock could drop to 140. Yeah. Still be in an uptrend, you know? Both of them are vulnerable. And it's so weird because they, like, they just pay. Like if you look at the LVGO run-up, they just it's like the it's like the news was leaked three months ago, and then they still paid top dollar for it. So, I, you know, these are these are you know these are scary, sloppy. There's a lot of sloppy behavior going on in the market, and you know who's doing the corp dev like that? They had to go chase this deal. Now, granted, Teladoc has had a a great run-up too, and this. Blah blah blah. This is you know they're spinning this as a huge merger, but these are massive mergers. This was what's the size of Teladoc? LVGO is uh, a twelve billion dollar company. So and you know, they could have bought this company for a billion bucks last year, and all of a sudden they're paying twelve. Um, and I get it that their stock's up too, but this is not. It really doesn't make sense to me, but not that I understand no that. Sense. I spent some time thinking about it this, this weekend, and these things make no sense to me. 
I mean, mm. they could definitely buy a, a startup for probably half a billion or a billion that is in the same field if they want to. But, uh, it's, it just feels, you know, again, I don't know much about the healthcare space, but I do know that you shouldn't be chasing, whether it's, especially when you're a market leader. I mean, the market anointed Teladoc a leader, and now they're risking everything fishy. There's some fishy behavior. There's just, there's a lot of sloppy behavior. I don't know how they get a deal this done, this this size done in a COVID world where you can't even, you know, get people in a room together. And they're talking about a 2020. So anyways, I, uh, I don't see how some of this stuff ends well, you know, from the overstocks, you know, the cryptos are starting to move too, Ivan. So, I mean, the money's just looking for risk. Cryptos, all weekend, a lot of these blockchain stocks on stock twits were just cooking you know, up 600%. I mean, you don't follow them in, right? There's like a public proxy for this stuff. But like a lot of these uh, these crypto stocks on stock, like that are trading on these exchanges are up four or 500% this weekend. So again, uh, it's fun. You know, we, you and I were in Jumia, JMIA. It's like a fake African square. It's kind of fake. Like the, I mean, this thing you caught at like six, I mean, you know, it's fun. Look, listen, it's the market, it took some risk. Uh, these are not normal gains people are seeing, you know? And I just had a really bad feeling. But at the same time, it's a really bullish tape. Like, are you seeing the same thing? Like the rotation's good? I mean, as I said, uh, basically the only thing that is kind of saving the market right now is a rotation into the stocks that haven't really participated that much. But mm -hmm. at the same time, there are definitely some warning signs and I listed the number, the number, the, the two biggest one, like the breakdowns in quite a few momentum stocks. Uh, first it was biotech, now it's software. And then the second thing, that melt up that we see in uh, the higher shorted stocks, typically you you see that you don't see that at the beginning of a new cycle or in the middle. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's not obviously a perfect timing indicator, but it's definitely those two taken together. It's something to take yeah. into account that the market right now is at a lot riskier level than it was two months ago. I think, and we're closer to the election and COVID is not going away and people are still massively unemployed or underemployed. And uh, my dog is about to lose her mind. The, um, she must be short overstock, my puppy. I'm trying to think what else I can see that's, so you got fraud, like really some melt ups in, in tokens, like blockchain, like blockchain tokens that nobody follows. You have um, kind of some melt ups and some weird names. Yeah, highly uh, shorted names. Just, high shorted names. Yeah. Um, and people are gunning for them. I don't blame traders to gun for them. They've got their list. There's never been an easier way to like pull lists together and, and do that. It's not my style. And then you have kind of the, ongoing war with China. You have this massive run in gold and um, Clorox. It's like a war, right? Like you're seeing gold go up, you're seeing the dollar kind of melt down. You're seeing defensive kind of stocks like groceries um, be strong. Stores, yeah. And, yeah. and then you have, so it's kind of like this weird thing. And then you have, you know, but then you have the high beta gaming and like Activision, you have gaming and, and, and digital stocks going through the roof. So it's like, it's kind of like a war, but everybody's going to be, uh, so there was a big pullback in Activision too. So I, you know, I think this is yeah. a week, I think yeah. this is a week where people need to be a little bit, you can take some shots if you're a trader, but like I'm, I'm on full alert and expect some bad stuff to happen. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm really wrong. I, you know, I, I was looking at Stone and Pags. They they look, yeah, Zillow, which I'm long, broke out. Yeah. Stop. Um, Just new, new but it, it hasn't made a move with authority, which I worry about. This is a setup in a good market. You should have just, in a world where Square is exploded, sorry, in a world that Square and PayPal have exploded, I thought, you know, and then Square kind of reversed into the gap. So I kind of thought stone and pags would take off, you know, so when setups aren't working, uh, 
it's not working badly, but these things can drop 10, 15% in a day. So, um, so I don't know, what are you working on? Anything? I mean, obviously the market is providing great ideas on a weekly basis and things can change weekly. For example, last week I played Lulu because there was an amazing setup here, those yeah. two tight range days. So it was setting up for a breakout. I played that with co-options. I played McDonald's was also setting up here that pullback to 20 day, the, the tight range contraction. I played mm -hmm. that move. So, I mean, the market still offers good swing and interday uh, opportunities um, on both sides, on the lock and on the short side. So obviously if you're active, there's a lot to do. Uh, but if you're not that active, I think there, as I mentioned, there's some warning signs uh, mm -hmm. that, are, that are starting to just add up. Uh, and as I say, this is not the market. Weird that, that the warning sign is that I'm just making a lot of money in the in the simple ideas, right? Like that Apple breakout is just fascinating to me. You know, it's just so big. You know, so uh, yeah, uh, it's it's trading like a like a billion dollar company. That's how it, it's moving. Yeah, I mean that is not a setup. Well, first of all, I wouldn't short it, but I got you know, and the relative strength spread. I mean, it goes. The stock's going higher. In the same I, way, I wouldn't be surprised if the stock went to 300. Yeah, like, it's you know, it like a perfect look, look at the squeezes in, in Facebook. This, this is not a, a small stock to just play around. And look at the, the moves on Thursday and even on Friday. Yeah, and just it could just be people just panicking to get me into stocks, but at the same time, that leads to all kinds of volatility as they sell on the swift like Datadog. That thing could do no wrong. And yeah. AYX has just been a loved most of the enterprise loves security stock team kind of slowed down. That was the early breakout. There's yeah. no real selling yet in DocuSign, I don't think. Oh, uh, let's check. It's starting to reverse. Huh? Look at it. Uh huh. So all those high flyers that are up like you know five hundred to a thousand percent in the past year or so. Just keep an eye on them because they can easily correct 30, 40% and be still in an uptrend. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. Small caps, yes. The rotation could be orderly from this going forward. So small caps in financials may be in a smooth rotation. You, you, you watch some money come out orderly out of, out of tech. The, the scary news is the froth and these names that are heavily shorted or have gone up 30 fold in six months. The, yeah. the fact that we have just a runaway executive orders and like kind of like, you know, someone acting like king. So anything can happen, you know, and they're doing it on Friday nights. I mean, they're just pumping and dumping, right? Like it's all kinds of executive orders on the weekend. And, you know, it's just, it's just like a coordinated attack on the markets, right? On just psychology uh, for people that are not playing the game and jacking their 401k. So kudos to people that are doing this. Just know you are, there's just, it's just not, you know, a simple market. So people need to just take a step back and, and really be careful and really understand the positions they're getting into because it's really, this market is sucking people in, right? And there's late breakouts in Facebook and Apple and but you also see the profit taking in some of these big runs. You're starting to see some profit taking. And 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 they're encouraged to keep their money in the market, like at a data dog and AOX, so they flip it into Apple and Facebook. And um so so I'm a little bit confused. And then you got the China problem. So I'm a little bit confused. I mean when you think the US dollar losing so much ground so quickly, obviously if you want to protect the purchasing power of your money and still be liquid, stocks are the only kind of game in town. So you, all you can do is just rotate into what's working. Yeah, but if I'm a, if I'm a foreigner and I just see, you know, the dollar, yeah, but you know, if you're a foreigner buying US stocks and you see the dollar that you didn't just get whacked, you haven't made any money. Yeah. 
you that, repay. That's yeah. a good point, but you know, then you buy uh, maybe your, your local stocks, the emerging market stocks. Well, it's changed. So you pull your money out and you bring it home. Uh, anyways, there's, there, there's a lot of macro things that I'm not a good macro person. You should freak yourself out. The tape, the price action, I think we've gone, we've kind of beat that, beat that together. I think next week we'll have a little more clarity. If there's follow through on the fangs and the banks, see some rotation and there's an orderly and then that that healthcare merger freaks me out and then this move in solar is just you know yeah and, and also speaking of laggards um also some of the restaurant stocks are, are kind of starting to kind of set up i mean obviously they're they're docks but they're they're starting to act constructively and we, we've talked about them a couple of weeks ago too but there are more and more of them they're just kind of starting to um mm. To, uh, Which should imply that we're opening. No, it just implies a rotation, as I said, rotation. Right. Into These are such tiny businesses, though. Yeah. All right. Well, Ivan, thanks, man. I, uh, I think, uh, from my point of view, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but like, won't be surprised to get smacked in the forehead. Yeah, uh, expect a little, a little bit more volatility uh, coming up. So. Okay, buddy. Have a great week. All right, you too, Harold.